What's up, Mir? Um, no, it's so lovely to see you. How's it felt like? I mean, I guess you didn't get the chance to see all the old crew. I know. I'm kind of sad I wasn't here yesterday to see Stacy and Lauren and Shane Your and Your husband. Jake. My husband. Your husband. That's right. Which I'm so curious to ask you about. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Emma Mary Spinner and where do you think they're living right now? Are they happy? You know what? I just did an interview in the other room and I said no. I don't I, I don't think they're together. I think, I think Sean came back from yes. Afghanistan. Yes. I think they got a divorce probably <laughs> about a week or two after it happened. <laughs> an they realized the temp an annulment. Yes. Temporary <laughs> insanity. Yes. And um yeah, you know, Sean served his time in Iraq. He's back. And, and he's back to take his girl. Yeah, they're baking cookies. So I thought... <laughs> maybe they're living in Wasega Beach. Exactly, I the mean, trailer park. You reminded me today that I thought that like Sean was hanging out in Wasega Beach. No, he went to like Iraq. He went to Iraq. That's... He fought for the cause. I, don't even, I didn't even remember that. Yeah. Which is really cool because right now in, in real life, Daniel Clark is like working in politics. Exactly. He's like a political commentator on yes. TV in the States, it's living in New true. York. true. And I, I mean, I <clears throat> barely keep in touch with him. Like, it's a shame, like here and there, like maybe on Instagram or something. But I've lost touch with so many of you guys. I know. It's because of so many years has gone. Well, I was going to ask, can you believe season one, you kicked it all off as Emma in 2001? So That's how old were you? Crazy. We're the same. Age. So I, um, I'm a year younger. Okay. I was so for me that was the end of grade eight. I remember missing my grade eight graduation to go to the CTV fall launch, and yeah, and so here you were we like are. So you were like 13 years old. Yeah, and now we're like these two grown ups. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two are, I mean, we're doing our best. Long. I think we've done pretty well growing up. I think. I, I think, think we, I learned I think to figure we did too. Okay, me too. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Degrassi kind of taught us. We didn't Everything have to make mistakes to for ourselves. Exactly. We did it vicariously through yeah, each other. Yeah, no gonorrhea in the throat here. Good. Yeah, yeah me I'm, neither. So I'm really glad that we got that warning through Emma. Thank you. Anytime, guys. And Jay. Just stay away from Jay. <laughs> um, I've always been so curious about season one. It's like this yeah. thing that I was not a part of. Yeah. And I look back and I just think, oh, God, like, because I came in in season two, but season one was just truly the beginning. What did I miss? You What was missed. it like? Seriously. See, I mean, the, for me, the first day of season one was completely surreal. I had no freaking clue what I was doing. I didn't know what scenes I was supposed to be doing. I'm pretty sure I came in with my full script memorized. Oh my god, so cute. Like, like no it was a play. Idea. Like it was a play. Totally. I was like, okay, am I performing now? I had no idea. Um, I mean, I think you missed a lot of the... Um, you came in at a good time. Season one was about us figuring out where our mark was where our light is, how to physically be on set. And yeah. you came in and it was like smooth sailing, like we kind of like worked Well, you guys out. taught me. You really guys taught me. Good. Because I remember I would turn to you guys and I would turn to like Lauren and you know, I'd be like, I don't know what to do because I'd never been on the set. Yeah. So like, I don't know what that means. Like, yeah. I don't know what, why do I, like when they were saying like, you know, watch your mark, I was like, what does that mean? Right. Like my marks at school? Yeah. Because <laughs> I think I'm doing all right. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I thought it was a favor. I thought some nice man was just being nice <laughs> to me, putting a sticker on the floor for me. I didn't realize it was a thing. Like, I had to, like, look with, at it without <laughs> looking at it. Um, yeah. It was the initial introductions weird? Because, like, none of you got... Lauren and, and, and Ryan had known each other. Right. Since fifth grade alien. So, I think that was the only people who had known each other. So what happened? I think... I think I was cast before they had cast Liberty, before they had cast Manny, and maybe even one other, because I remember reading with them. I had already... Which makes sense, because you were the beginning. Like, this show's technically built around your character. Which is crazy. Yeah. And, uh, yes, because I remember being in Cassie's audition, and I remember, I think, Sarah Barabal, who played Liberty, and Cassie, I think they both read for, like, Different both parts. roles or yeah, yeah. something like that, because I remember reading with them. So then when finally we did meet, I had met those girls before, and I saw Chrissy, who played Terry. Yes. I remembered her from my audition, because I think we were, like, chatting. We had the same agent or something like that. So, yeah. Is that a bit surreal that the whole concept of Degrassi, as like we know it from 2001 upward, is revolves around your character. Because, I mean, for people who don't know, Spike, a character from the original Degrassi, um, you're her daughter. Emma's her daughter. Yeah, it's, it's a little The result crazy. of a teenage pregnancy, which was the issue back then. Exactly. And it's <clears> nice, I mean, the, the issue carries. I mean, we've seen it in all the generations, mm -hmm. is 
teens teens have babies they yeah. have to deal with being young and having all this responsibility it, I, I think it's interesting what's cool about your character is that in the Degrassi correct me if I'm wrong in the Degrassi world you're the only like teen baby that was kept I think you're right. And I'm so grateful Spike kept you because we would not have like we would not have had this. <laughs> Thank you, Spike. Thank you. <laughs> That's all thanks, Spike. Yeah, no, it, it's true. And you know what? Like I remember um, the only time I'd ever seen Degrassi was in health class. No, they showed me in school. They showed me they showed one episode. I'm pretty sure. Like this was back in grade five. Like I don't I didn't really remember. I just remembered the, the song. And then when I got this audition, I was like, oh yeah, isn't that show that I watched? I'm so curious what episode that would have been. I feel like it I feel like it would have been the pregnancy episode. Yeah. I don't remember because I was probably like passing notes and classes. Isn't that and so me. bizarre? It would have been that episode and then you are the result of that. Right? <laughs> it's That's so cool. It's it's pretty insane and it's amazing. I mean now here we are 14 years later. later. Yeah. Remember when you had that van and we would go the to green the mall minivan. for lunch? Yes. It was my mom's green minivan. <laughs> and I we'd remember. all be like, I remember they didn't let us leave. They yeah. didn't like when we left the compounds because they couldn't trust that we'd come back. <laughs> so like, and like the gate would open and all of a sudden someone would see that there was a minivan filled with the whole Although cast whole racing cast. away. <laughs> and we're like, oh screw God. you, we'll be back. Oh my God, this is too funny. Um, and then we'd have all our cell phones would be rigging and we ignore it all just so that we can go to a strip mall and get like a Tim right? Hortons coffee. I think we just wanted to be rebels. We yeah. just wanted to leave the compound. Totally. We wanted to be, and looking back that we could have been so much worse. We were a good oh, yeah. Oh, we were yeah. really well behaved. We were very There was well a couple behaved. house parties that no one yeah. has to know about, but other than that, I thought we did a good job. We did a really good job. Emma, today at lunch we were talking about her guys. Yes. Is there a standout guy for Emma, you think? Well, for me, the standout guy is Sean. It has to be Sean. Good choice. I mean, she had some indiscretions. I was trying, I was thinking about it, like, why did she date Kelly? Why did she date Damien? Why did she date Chris Sharp? Chris Sharp. <laughs> we don't, we don't know. No. We don't know. <laughs> Emma, like, as she got old, turned into a bit of a hoochie. She was getting around. She was, she really was. She started out this environmentalist, this cause yeah, girl, never like, kissed a no boy. Gen and, no, uh, I remember, like, you were campaigning one time for, like, genetically, like, against genetically modified I remember foods. that, too. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess she, um... <laughs> She got. She came into herself. She came, she came into herself. She really yes, she did. did. She she gained a lot of bracelets. <laughs> she gained a lot of bracelets. Yeah, she did. I got this one from Shane Kipple. Oh <laughs> wow! In in the ravine, no doubt. <laughs> yes, the alleged <laughs> ravine. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, Sean was always just a character that I loved. Yeah. Also, because I've said this often, I'm going to keep repeating it until Danny Clark hears it. That I just had the biggest crush on Danny Clark. <laughs> My whole life. Danny, did you hear that? Danny, you this know. He was just one. so charming and he was just such a bad boy. Bad boys. I right. think it's because Emma was attracted to some bad boys. Why? Totally. Why I think, think it's that? that thing of the good girl and the bad boy and the opposites attracting and yeah, like Sean coming from the wrong side of the tracks and Emma dealing with this image of, oh, she's so, she's so prudish and she's so proper and she just likes the environment and then here comes someone who wakes up a whole different side of herself um, and vice versa Sean probably loved it yeah but there was this little nerdy girl that was yeah. gonna show him what it's like to be cared for <clears throat> and that was a great influence on him it's true yeah. it's true so how do we avoid bad boys is there like advice that like are, are they worth avoiding like for all the all the all the teens in high school you see know? that's why Taylor Swift exists <laughs> isn't so she true. you're so right she isn't, teaches us all about isn't that. that isn't that her her, her goal in life <laughs> date the bad boy write a song about them exactly blank space if I had a blank space baby I'd put Sean's name in that <laughs> ASAP and it, 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 a scene that I have with Emma so strong in my image uh, in a strong image in my head is the shooting and just the gun right in her face yes it was absolutely terrifying. Absolutely How was it terrifying. shooting that scene? I know that you probably have spoken about it, but... It was absolutely terrifying. It really was. I remember how scary it was knowing it was a real gun, knowing how before we filmed they would have to... It was a real gun? Yep. They had to show the cast and crew that it's not loaded. It's just empty. That they had someone on, like a, I guess they call it like a gun wrangler, who was handling it, was the only person that could... It was terrifying. And for that split second moment, like... Obviously, as an actor, you try and be as present as you can, and so I, I but felt what it's a like. Gun in your face. To have a gun pointed at my head. Yeah. yeah. And a gun is a scary thing to me. I mean, 
mean, just yeah, terrifying. For sure. The energy on set was tense. Everybody, everybody was in a zone that day that mm -hmm. we were shooting and filming. Sorry to... Um, pun intended. No, no <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> I, I, I love the way that was produced. It kind of felt like, you know, was it like Elephant that Gus Van Sant movie? It was yes. Like, really, it was like quiet exactly. and really slow. And then on top of all of this drama, Sean steps in front of you. He was going to take a bullet for Emma. Yes. If that's not love, what is? I agree. I agree. I don't know if Spinner would take a bullet for Emma. I, 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 don't, I don't think Spinner would. No. I think Spinner would be popping down to the dot, making a grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know she was back on the show recently? Really? Yeah, playing somebody who works at a dot, like playing Spinner working at the dot. No like way. In season 14. Let me guess, season. he had no ring on his finger, did he? <gasps> Holy <laughs> shit. Holy sugar. You were right. I don't think he had a ring. Emma and that Spinner. That is a nice little plot got twist. Divorced. I think we have all the evidence now. <laughs> um, behind the scenes memory. Is there something that stands out? Um, I mean, like, there's so many behind-the-scenes memories. Like, when we were just chatting at lunch about our dressing rooms, and I think back to, you know, at lunchtime, and Cassie and I would be blasting our Shakira, having, like, a dance Amazing. party in our dressing Whenever, room. Whenever, wherever. Yeah, time, yeah, exactly. We would all pile into someone's room yeah. and, like, sit around, and hair and makeup would have to call us 15 times because we... Because we were moving at a glacial pace. We were moving at a glacial pace. <laughs> Do you remember the tutoring room? And oh, God, that room. the efforts to try and pull us in there. Seriously, we'd be sitting in there, and they'd be like, all right, what homework do you guys have? We're like, we don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah. And no, I still, I mean, like I was saying, I still remember exactly where your dressing room was. Yeah. Because you would be the first people I would see when I walk in, you and Cassie, just totally. to my right, the first room in the hallway. Totally. And be like, hey, girls. Hey, girls, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Um, were you in the food fight? I was in the food fight. That, that was one of my favorite moments. That ever. was pretty fun. I don't know if I've ever told you this story because it probably happened on the other side of the room. Yeah. But there was this one, and I just shared it. But I shared it with a group of people. Nobody found it funny because I don't, they weren't there. But I feel like you might. So um, Aubrey opens up a Joe Louis to chuck it because at that point, like we were just loving that we got to have a food fight yeah. by permission. Yeah. So we were like almost ready to chuck chairs. So Aubrey finds the jewelry, opens it, and he throws it at Jake. <laughs> Jake Goldsby was just running by at the time, and me and Jake Goldsby were like little little ones, and we were running by at the time. And I watched it perfectly because I was beside oh Aubrey. God. It just went, and it just like the cream in the I middle just suction on his ear, and then he pulls it off, but it's all filled with cream, so he can't hear, and he starts running around screaming, "Cut! Cut!" I totally I laughed so hard that I fell, I and I pulled Aubrey down I with me, including like four this. background performers, and I had like a <laughs> twisted knee with like a brace around for like a week after. Poor, J poor Jake is poor deaf Jake. From, from Joe Louis here. <laughs> oh my god. So, testing out some Emma trivia. This one I think you're gonna get because we had chatted about it before, but like, what guy was Emma and Manny fighting over at the 80s dance? Craig Manning. Who was dressed up as? Sid Vicious. Yes. And who were you dressed up as? Cindy Lauper. I love when Spike goes, what are you doing at some party dressed up as me? I'm not you, I'm Cindy, Cindy Lauper. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember who Cassie was dressed up as? She was Molly Ringwald. Yeah, good yeah. one. And uh, who was Aubrey dressed up as? Michael Jackson? Yes. And Shane. Oh shoot, who was Shane? Me and Lauren had was a disagreement he, like, on this. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was Vanilla Ice. <laughs> And then Lauren was like, just because he's white? I'm like, no, not just because he was dressed as vanilla. But then her response was actually better. It was the 80s. That wasn't vanilla. Um, do you remember right. what Lauren was dressed up as? Madonna. Genius. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? Andrea, Andrea was Tina Turner. Killing it. And do right. you remember Christina? I forget. Oh, shoot. What was what she? Was Chrissy? Lauren told me. Lauren remembered. Oh, my God. Uh, Pat Benatar. Yes. Yes. And then do you know what nobody can remember, including myself? What was Mr. Simpson dressed up? What was Snake dressed up as? And I remember you kind of walk up to him and he's like, I'm hip, I'm right. with it, something like that. Oh my god, that's exactly what he did. What on earth was he? I don't remember. I don't remember. I think oh. this is going to be, any fans out there that remember, please just tweet at it. Tweet at us about because I have no yeah, clue. Yeah, no clue. I wonder if Stefan knows. <laughs> that's a good question. I'm going <laughs> to just test him randomly, just one day. Um, okay, on the same Stefan train, old school one. In school's out. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll bleep this out so you can say the full sentence. But what, fill in the blank, what Caitlin says to Joey. You were 
f***ing Tessa Kim. Campanelli. Killed it. <laughs> you are f***ing Tessa Campanelli. I love that line. That's a great line. Don't you wish we got to use the F word on the show? I really do. I think that'd be great. Oh my god, yeah. Like Emma marrying Spinner and like, I f***ing do! <laughs> well, there's so many moments we could have sworn because the, the drama was so high. Seriously. I guess my last question is, how do you just now, looking back at the show, what's your, what do you take away from all these years now? Well, I remember you describing it when, when the show finished. It, it felt like being dropped off in the Sahara Desert yeah. and not really knowing which way to go because we, we created such a world together. Like, we had, it was our world. Like, we were friends. We had our, our events and our life and our crew was like our family. Like, it was like... It was like a whole world. So, I mean, I think it's like literally like a chapter of our life that we'll yeah. always have together. No one else will really understand it. Totally. It's like a little secret that we all kind of share. Yeah, we're just all, we're the only ones in on this whole joke. It feels it, like it, it's a totally a joke. It is. And then there's all these people on the outside that are watching it as like this show that's lasted how many years? It's like iconic brand. And for us, it, it kind of is just like real life. Yeah. All right. Thank you for hanging out. Of course. I adore you. And uh, until next time, if you have any plot ideas for Marco and Emma in the future, shoot it our way. I am hanging here at the picnic benches with my old buddy, Danny Clark. How's it going? Very well. Well, what has your life been actually since Degrassi? It's been pretty good. Yeah, tell me what you've been up to. Uh, I was in school. After I left the show, I uh, went to college. Nice. Um, so when you say college, this is like college in the States. It's like university. Yeah, I went yes. to uh, NYU in New York City. Awesome. And um, once I graduated there, I started working for ABC News. What were you studying at school? Uh, political science. Yeah, shift, super boring. Eh? <laughs> yeah. What a shift. From yeah. being on like a, a teen show to studying political science. Well, how did, how did you find yourself there? I mean, I was always kind of interested in that kind of stuff, and it, you're right, it is super boring. Um, I just, no, it's not boring. That's awesome. It's just like such a big like change, right? Well, I didn't want to like go and do exactly what I was doing before, yeah. right? I kind of wanted to like jump out and be like, okay, what do I do with my spare time? And a lot of that was like reading news and reading about politics, and so I just was like, okay, you know, I want to learn more about this. And, awesome. Um, but I did, you know, I did some other stuff, like I took like photography classes as electives and it's weird because then I ended up back in news and it was like, I ended up back in media anyways, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of a small world. So it's awesome to have you back, is it weird to be back here? Because we're on set, if you can't see, I know we look like we're in a lovely garden having a picnic, but uh, we're actually we're not. here, Degrassi Community School's right in front of us. We are, we're by the garbage cans over there, Yes. So we're on the back lot. Remember we used to have like, we would eat and hang out here? Yeah. These very picnic tables. Like, how do you feel being back? Is it? Uh, it's kind of surreal in a way. I mean, it's it was the same thing when I saw all of you. Is like, um, by and large, like a lot of it hadn't really changed. You know, like all of you looked the same to me. And I mean, you're gonna show me around in a little bit. And I'm gonna see how much it changed. But we got the front of the school right here, and the yeah, steps that hasn't looks changed. pretty much the same to me. Yeah. <laughs> Although so. now you're saying our marquee is like digital. Ah, the yes. The future has come, Danny. Apparently, it has. Yeah. I must have. Uh, must have missed that. Yeah, I remember when we were like on set and we had like no cell phones or anything to distract us. So yeah. We just like. So we had to actually talk. <laughs> we had to actually talk, and yeah. we were just really annoyed because everybody was like, "Shh, shh, shh." Yeah. That was the uh, worst. So bored. They should have just given us something to do. Uh, but Sean really was my favorite character. I had a soft spot for Sean because I thought, like, you know, he was the bad kid who was trying to do good. You come into the show. Uh, uh, Sean comes into the show having like beat up a kid, make him, made him deaf yeah. in Wasega. So like a, right? a bad guy. He was like kinda. a bad guy who came mm. to like reform himself at Degrassi. Like describe Sean. I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's like one of those like misunderstood youths kind of thing yeah. where, uh, I mean, my understanding of his character was um, he had a really like hard exterior. But if you look at like a lot of the issues that we tackled in the show, Sean was really on like more of the progressive side of it. Like he was always coming to your defense you know, it's he not was. like he was ever antagonizing uh, you or, or your mm. character for, uh, you know, for being gay or anything like that. And he was never, you know, same thing with the with the ecstasy. He ended up with uh, Jake and Ryan. What he ended up switching it oh. Oh, so that, that they yeah. didn't actually take it. You know, so the, these are examples of like him as a character where you would think if you were a bad guy, he would have done things differently. So clearly he's a nice guy. Um, 
It's just he's a little rough around the edges. Well, you know what I think? It's because he came from like a rough past that like he'd been there and done that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So when he sees all these like kids like playing with ecstasy, he's like, I got this, guys. Don't do it. Right. I figured this out. This is not, you know, because your, your character seems to age quite quickly. Yeah. You came in like, you know, you, you've been places, you've seen stuff. So you were kind of there giving everybody advice. Did you have a conscious effort being like, I'm going to do Sean hard on the outside and, you know, sincere on the inside? Or oh. was that like, it just came natural? I think we were like, sure. Nine. Well, but that's the thing. I mean, we were that age, you know, and so we in real life were going through a lot of those issues, or at least we knew someone who we were close to who was. And so for us, I think it was a lot easier for us to get into character. It's not like we were playing superheroes or anything yeah. like that. We were playing kids, True. you know, and like I said, most of the issues that were tackled with the show, lots of people, either directly or indirectly, deal with all the time. All the time. And that's why people love the show. Yes. Yeah, so and true. so for us, uh, to get into character, to know really what's expected of us and what we need to like drive home, it, it became like second nature. And it's a series, it's not a movie, and so we all had time, we had years as an ensemble cast to like develop this, you know? Um, okay, there's something that has to be spoken about. Okay. Emma marries Spinner. Were you pissed? Were you, was Sean hurt? Yes. Because you guys had a lovely relationship, didn't you? We did. We did. We, uh... It was meant to be. You know? We should have, uh... Well... There's no, uh... There's no going back. Let's just say, I called a couple people and I was very upset. <laughs> okay, good. Because, uh... I was upset for you sure. Know, at the end of the day, I mean, that was kind of the ultimate relationship, at least... Obviously, for Sean's character, I mean, he loved Emma clearly more than he loved anything else. Yeah, you stepped in front of like Sean steps in front of a gun for Emma. That's crazy. Yeah, that's love. That's love. What was their so, chemistry like? Why, like, why do you think they got along? Because Sean was the punk and Emma was the good girl. Yeah, I think Is it. That the case. Well, always? originally it was like the whole opposites attract kind of thing, where they were like, "Oh, of course the goody girl's gonna go for this bad boy." But again, I just think it was because Sean uh, was nice on the inside, and I think Emma really like realized that, and she probably knew it from day one, and so they just got along. And of course, why wouldn't Sean like Emma? She's, yeah. Gorgeous, <laughs> and you know, I think and the, smart, and you know, and just good pretty much the perfect girlfriend. Yeah. You know, totally out of Sean's league. But and she was a good influence on Sean. She was, yeah. Until, well, the thing happened in the ravine, and then Sean was all like, "I don't know who you are anymore." Yeah, well, I mean, I guess anyone would react that way <laughs> to that ravine. Thing. <laughs> to that ravine thing. If you're a fan, you know. Ah, uh, well, what I mean, was caught? Yeah, what exactly ravine. happened? Yes. in that ravine. <laughs> Um, and then, and then no. you dad, then then Sean dated Ellie, which I loved. I thought you guys like those two characters were a great fit. Yeah, and it was because they were both kind of like outcasts in a way. Yeah. They were kind of on the fringes, and so that sort of made sense as well. But I mean, Ellie was never like the golden girl like Emma, yeah. you know. And so you know, if you had Poor to like choose Ellie. who you're gonna marry, Ellie or or Emma, I think Sean, I think Sean would choose Emma. I think so too, and yeah. I think that's the appropriate choice. Um, but do you know that both our characters dated the same girl then? Really? Yeah, Michael dated uh, Ellie. Is that right? Yeah. Before he, you know, realized that. Well, I think this interview like is over. Girls. Yeah. <laughs> so where is Sean now? Because he went, where'd he go? He went to the military. I think he I was, was so he confused. went to Afghanistan. No, but you're not the first, you're not the only one. I thought a lot he of went to Wasega and it was done. A lot of people think that and they think, oh, he went back to Wasega. But I think that was at the end of season four, right? After the shooting. And he went out to Wasega to reunite with his family. And then when he came back, um, you know, there was the whole car racing thing, the jail thing, and, you know, a bunch of stuff happened. And then that's when he decided he was going to enlist in the military. And I think of what it was, it season seven or something. He says, he says goodbye to Emma. And then he dips. And I think he was going uh, to Afghanistan because there were a lot of Canadian troops that uh, were yeah. serving in Afghanistan at the time. All right, we're going to take a tour of Degrassi Community oh. School. Okay. Let's go do it. All right, let's do it right let's now. see what we remember. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not too sure what to say. Neither am I. Um, Here we are, though. It's Grassy Community School. Yep. Does this change? This is a stand, though. No, nah, this is the exact same. Yeah. You got a fancy new sign. That's about it. Yeah, digital generation. Uh -huh. Did you hear about that? I did not. Yeah. I think I missed the boat on that one. <laughs> well, we're in the future now. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go see the back lot because that's actually changed a lot. All right, fair enough. Lead the way. I'm kind of lost. I don't exactly know where I'm going. <laughs> Seriously, I got lost the first time I came back here. So you left in what? Eight? Yes. Eight would have been your last. No, I think it was season seven. That's when uh, Sean went away to the army and went to uh, go serve in Afghanistan. Oh. 
So then you weren't an eight? And I never oh, went back no. and there was no wrap up. So no one ever found out what happened to him. Oh, that's true. You know why? Because I get confused because Stacy, Lauren and I were in the university house. So like we kind of were on the show, but not at Degrassi. Right. So I kind of all- Yeah, you guys were in college, right? every, But yeah, we went to college. So I forgot when college. You have been spending a lot of time in the States. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but they serve food cold when you're on set. It's never hot because it looks different. So every single time you're chowing down on something, it tastes is awful. Is that true? Yeah. I just assumed it was never hot because no one cared. No. It was it's, like, eat it and make it they look don't believable. Want the steam. No, it's because they first like to punish actors because they're sadistic, and second, because they say the food looks worse. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the dots changed a lot, though, because remember in our day, it was all, like, red. It was yeah. red. Didn't and, like, it blow it was up? Kind of, like, the grill. It did Wasn't blow it, like, up. like, on fire? Who blew it up? Somebody blew it up. I think it was I think Emma. It was Emma. Yeah. yeah. She Way left something running. Way to go. Say, kids. Don't leave stuff running. Turn off the oven, check everything before you leave. Otherwise, you'll end up like the dot. Um, no, Joey's house was here, Joey uh, and Craig's, but they've changed a little bit. It's got a, a renovation. Yeah? Yes. Um, Emma's is down here, but my question is, I seem to have a memory. Okay. Actually, not a memory. My main memory of Sean is him fixing things with his brother in the back somewhere. Where was yes. that? Yes. Where was that? That's a remember. good question. Uh, was it back here? Because that's this has changed. I think it was. Yeah, this was back when his brother uh, was into motorcycles. And it was the guy who looked like the, the lead from Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> the lead singer. <laughs> Chris Martin. Yeah. This That's was right. Emma's house. It has changed. Yeah, you're right. It's this I corner. Oh, no, no, it was the corner one. You want to yeah, know why? Because corner. when he got arrested in season six, they he was at Emma's you? house. Yeah, because I was hiding in her basement. And then uh, the cops came. What happens yeah. in this show? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, everything's all miniature. I don't know if you guys can notice this with the... Uh, with the screen, but all of these houses are like half the size they normally would be. Yeah. I fit perfectly in them. It's like Disney World in a way, you know, where like you walk by the homes there and everything's kind of miniature. Yeah. It's kind of like it's that. It's like Mickey Mouse's house. It's like Degrassi's Disney World. That's what it's like. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. It's always a delight. Yeah. You know, we yeah. were just talking about how it's surprising how many years have gone by. Yeah. But we don't feel old. I don't think we look old. No, I think we look pretty much the exact same, but you're right. Um, it's nostalgic, you know, it is. but at the same time, I mean, it's all family. We've known each other for so long. It's just kind of just like second half for us. Yeah, I would have met you like 15 years ago, like half my life. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. I know, it's nuts. <clears throat> we could almost be brothers. Aren't we? I think so. Pretty close. We are. Um, I'm sure I will see you maybe another 15 years from now. We're going to be walking through this yeah, set. Yeah, I'll come by in like my mid-50s like, and I'll be like, that? Ah. Yeah. I, At that point, I will not remember that. That's yeah, going to be a thing. <laughs> This, you know, the trivia is going to get harder and harder as the years go by. I already don't remember. No. Um, should we go hit up craft? Yeah, we should. All right. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to go grab a sandwich. Nice. Okay. Stacy Farber. So, you know, we see each other all the time, which I'm always very grateful for. Me too. You know, you know, Marco and Ali have stayed friends over the years. <laughs> It's very great. Yes. Also, I hold you dear to me because, you know, you are Marco's ex-girlfriend. Yes. It's really important. I'm the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for Marco, yeah, you'll always be his first, you know, crush, love, kiss. So, I have a question. Yeah. Is it, like, was... Was I... Like, first The best kiss? I've ever had? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Were, were you my first kiss? Like in real life. No, but you know what's funny? No, I funny? thought that was true. No, but you're almost true because oh, no. when I found out I had to kiss you on the show, yeah. um, I hadn't kissed a boy and I went to summer camp um, for the first half of the summer or something or I went for the whole summer and then I would leave to film Degrassi um, and I there were only two girls in my cabin, myself included, who hadn't kissed a boy yet. And I was super stressed about our upcoming on-camera kiss. So I sort of orchestrated and like arranged to have my first kiss that summer before I went on So set. how was it orchestrated? Did you play Spin the Bottle? No, I did have a crush on this guy named Jesse. Oh, that's He was cute very name. sweet. I'm really jealous. And I remember where we were when we when we made out for the first time. You made out before you kissed me? Yeah, it was my first like real kiss. Yeah, but like you used tongue? Yeah, but I wow. remember being really so freaked hurt out. Right well, you didn't use tongue with me, <laughs> heads up. No, but anyway, I know, this guy but did. I just, you have to be like five, like two minutes ago, me thought I was your first kiss and now there's I'm tongue. I'm sorry. It's okay, continue, but I have to hear it But the rest of the sometime. story is that we made out and it 
like freaked me out because I hadn't done it before and I thought it was so weird you know like, like tongue a tongue touching. in your mouth yeah. and like yeah, yeah. oh and I I had a very like strange feeling about it but I I felt prepared for my job that's how professional I am that was you did your research you did yeah um aside from Margo who were like Ellie standout boyfriends to you Ellie ended up having quite a few storylines with guys. Um, there was Sean. I thought Sean was hot. I thought that was a hot relationship. Don't you think? I thought, you know, I Daniel Clark remember. was so cute. Yeah, he was working out a lot back then. Yeah. Eating those turkey packs and yeah. drinking chocolate milk, I you know? That, and we were yeah. young. Yeah. He was on his He game. was like bodybuilding body at like 16. <laughs> like and I earlier. was just like eating carbs in the corner. Yeah. Know what was happening. Um, that was a good one. Um, who else did, oh, but who, yeah, who else did you do? Jesse, the editor. The Very editor cute. Before. Very cute. Um, he was super cute. That was interesting. Yeah, they brought him on to be my older. Was that? Was that all? Was, the, was those what? Huh? Those were the only two. People. No, and Craig. And Craig. And Craig. The big movie ending. Mm -hmm. So they got together in the end of the movie, right? Grass goes Hollywood. Yeah. No. Don't they run and kiss each other at the airport? Yeah, and then she leaves. They're yeah, not together. but it's implying that like they'll connect again. I don't know. Hmm, interesting. I don't know what happens. Something in the end that you with know them. the fans could try to solve. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love a good open-ended ending. Um, I mean, of course, like there's the whole cutting storyline and, and, mm -hmm. and all of that. But like, is there a moment particularly in the show playing Ellie that stands out for you, like in the storylines? Something that you liked, that you thought, wow, like this is, this is a really impactful storyline. I had really good stuff, so I had a, I had a lot of that. Because um, there was your dad, there was the cutting. Yeah, and like a version of the cutting, and I mean, all there's parallels within all of these issues that the characters had, but um, she had a drinking problem at one point. Um, oh, true. Like a couple times. Um, I thought all of it was super interesting, and and none of it was anything I had experienced in my own life. So that's where the challenge came in, and also where a lot of the fun came in, like using your imagination to um, try and feel what it might be like to go through these things when you had it yourself. So that was very cool. And then there was a little phase, you know, before the. Degrassi goes Hollywood movie when things got lighter. Yeah, and it was the university house got much lighter. Yeah, and I, I actually yeah. became sort of the comic relief in some of the episodes. Like, I was the subplot, and it was about... They had me doing some very, like, comedic things, and it was a strange um, shift. And I liked that in the end it went back to how it started. It was closer to, to that tone, but... Well, I think maybe the comedy part came from the fact that, like, Marco Page and Ellie, at that point in the universe, they become such good friends. So, like, there was, yeah. like, this kind of shorthand between them. Yeah, and very like dry humor. fun of each other, yeah. And, and her stuff with Jesse and getting cheated on. And yeah, yeah. Even, I mean, maybe it was just how I played it, but I reacted in this very, like, comedic way. Or I, I had... I guess I was growing more as an actor, so I was thinking about different levels and um, bringing a sarcasm yeah. to her. But that was fun for me because I got to play funny stuff in addition to all the really heavy stuff. Do you have an Ellie trivia for me? Yes, yeah, stop me. Questions about Ellie for yeah, you? Yeah, okay. but you won't think I would know. Just give me one. Let's see if I can do it. What instrument did she play in the band? Jeez, this is insane. I can see it. I can see you. I can see you playing an instrument. Mm -hmm. Tambourine was Manny. Maybe it was you. Someone throws a drumstick though, but you didn't play drums. Then why would you have thrown a drumstick at Manny? Were you playing a ding? A little ding triangle thing? Well, we were in the band for years. Yeah. Which is hilarious because we don't play instruments in real life. Yeah. So that's great. Do you know which one I play? Yeah, guitar. Which one? I don't know what it's called. 
<laughs> no, it's like a type. There's of... a red one. <laughs> I remember that. It was a bass, hmm. bass guitar, but I don't remember yours. I say a triangle. That's rude. <laughs> Obviously, I'm better than the triangle. It was a the tambourine. drums. You didn't play the drums. I, I thought did. Shane played the drums. You had two bands. Shit. I played you guitar. Play the drums because that's band. why you threw it at Nanny's head. I knew Remember it. Remember, Craig teaches I knew it. It was how all... to play the drums, and we have like a sexy drum. Yeah, you're so. I was lesson. my my bands were mashed up. Did we have a band name? We played at that wedding, and I think we slayed it. You were, we were downtown Sasquatch. No, we were downtown Sasquatch. You were not that. <laughs> <laughs> what were we? I know what we are. It'll come to I don't me. think we had a this name. This is good so we don't get Alzheimer's. We have to rack our brains. I don't and think we had a name. Ourselves. I don't think we had a name. Yeah, we did. Of we just we played did. weddings. We got a, almost had a record deal. Oh, we did. Shoot. And I let, like, now Jake's gone. I think we're going to have to figure it's it out. It's not like, um,. No idea. You sure we're not downtown Sasquatch? No, we're downtown Sasquatch. No nope. boy <laughs> band. <laughs> By we, I mean Shane and, and Jake and Aubrey fictionally behind me. So we'll have to get back. If and any, me. Uh, if any of and you me. No. Remember the episode where the photographer, the manager comes in? So we were all on the band. But you were so rude that you cut me out. No, because you came later. You yoko that. That's that that band. Yeah, but remember when they, we Jake did the photo away. shoot and and it's that manager keeps putting Jake and Craig yeah. in the front. Yeah, yeah. We're all in no, that. No, that wasn't that. No, that was with Cassie and or no with uh, Ashley Isaac. No, she wasn't in the band. <laughs> She's there are too many band. bands. Essentially, we have absolutely no idea what this band Unclear. name is. So if you guys know, please you know tweet it or whatever at us because I have no clue. Um, Stacy Farber. I love, I love you. Thank you for being my first girlfriend. You're welcome. And you know. Thanks for being my work. first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so there is okay. You want to? Can I blow your mind with something? Maybe Please I've posted so. this once before. I remember when you, because we we were cast like around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Right after I was cast, I got this scene in my room. They asked me to read for the Marco auditions. And it was a scene like this kind of love story between, I swear to God, between Craig mean? and Marco. Like they were kind of flirting. I knew it! I swear to God. And so then I was like, when are we, oh, I was like, is Craig what? gonna be gay? Oh, okay, when are we shooting? And they're like, oh, just throw that in the trash. Just regard it. So never, they wrote never, that at one point? Never spoke about it again. Shut up. <laughs> I knew it. I knew when we kissed in that scene later on that there was history there. Isn't that funny? That's a stereotype. So I think I think there could have been I think they were toying with making like our characters like a love interest and then they just dropped it. <laughs> when in doubt kiss Craig. When in doubt kiss Craig. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean <laughs> that's it. Just I th but those are words that I still live by, when in doubt kiss Craig. Who doesn't? Who doesn't, you know, frankly? Yes. Well, I, I gotta be so honest with you. Guys. A lot of kind of like girls wish, you know, when in doubt they could have kissed you, you know? Like, you're a bit like of a heartthrob of our time. Like it was. You were like, I don't the, even know how to respond to that. But I know, yeah, I know it's gonna make you uncomfortable. Which it is, is gonna make me uncomfortable. Absolutely but that's, I guess it's a compliment. Out. Thank you. Yeah, but like you were like, but it was like, how about this? It's easier this way. Craig was like, the yeah, heartthrob the character. character right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, it was like a kind of a badass thing going on. He was a little like wounded, yeah. delicate bird, like, like trying to find his way in the world. He was very wounded. <clears throat> and yeah, um, I mean, I guess that kind of answers my question a bit. But like, did you feel weird by all the attention of being like the like Degrassi main man, like that like heartthrob yeah. man? Yeah. Like, did I you get a lot of attention from girls? Because I didn't go to the special high school that a lot of people in the show went to. I, yeah. You went to, yeah, which was awesome. We went to, like, I went to a normal school. Me too. So, like, I remember after Craig impregnated Manny, which happened on the show, people threw condoms at me. What? The day after the episode aired. Like, like, and like own. nowadays, I'm like, that's amazing. People thought it was real. People like connected with it to the point that they chucked condoms. Yeah, at you. but at the time. When I was like 17 years old, I I did not want I did not I was, was like it was like bullying yeah, like I didn't, I did not say, like, like that attention at all like I did I didn't know how to deal with it. Okay, so let, let's just look at Craig for a sec because like he had like a lot of stuff. I remember looking back. 
Yeah. You know, like you had the abortion thing, which was huge with Manny. Like that was a really big deal. There were a lot of issues. Yeah, the abortion thing was a really big deal. I was, Craig like was Poland. abused by his father. Yeah, abused by his father, which was your first episode. Very first episode. He was diagnosed bipolar. Yes. He was like cheating, cheating on girls. He had a dabbled in cocaine oh, at one yeah, point. You were, it was a lot. Cocaine, you it was were a like lot of a issues. Lot. Why do you think someone like Craig never found his footing? Like, what was his jam? And like, you as an actor, how did you keep like putting that energy into that character? I remember Stefan uh, Snake. Stefan. Good old Snake. Mr. Simpson. Mr. Simpson um, telling me that because he I, I, he started like writing for the show and directing the show and I remember he was telling me when we were shooting the, the cocaine episodes I was like geez they keep like throwing these intense storylines at, at me and he's like well it's because you can you can do these bad do things them. but remain likable so we so we stay with you Interesting. and I remember being like like just as as an actor I mean whatever it's kind of funny to talk about but as an actor I was like. Right, that, that's why they would keep throwing things at me and I would... And you don't like see it at the time until someone says it, you know, back to you. Yeah, and think I think, and I, like I was, I didn't want, like I, I connected with, obviously I connected with Craig so much, so I didn't want him to be like a bad person, I wanted him to be like a good person. So I kept like trying to make him a that's good person, I kept like making him a worse person and yeah, a worse yeah. person. And but maybe it was like those two energies against each other, you know? He's like, human, he come on, it's human. In high school, like... But yeah, he had like a, the 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 dude had this troubled past. Yeah. You know, he'd like lost a parent. He had an abusive father. He was bipolar. He like later lost his father as well. Lost his father. So he lost both of them. He was an orphan, living with yeah. his had this weird relationship with his stepdad. Like, there's bound to be yeah a lot of. Was it cool was... shooting with uh, you know Pat Mastroianni and Joey Jeremiah? Like that's like the beginning kind of. Like to have that, like you had, yeah. you know, you were able to be with the original cast, which I thought was always so cool. Yeah, like, that you, was you cool. Miriam. That was cool. Yeah, he was, he was awesome. When I auditioned, I didn't know who he was. And he, he, I remember everyone was like, oh, like he, they were so nervous around him because he was yeah. Joey Jeremiah. I'd never seen the show before. And he was like, dude, you want to go run lines with me? Yeah. My favorite scene working with you, working with Joey Jeremiah, when you dress up as Sid Vicious in season two for the 80s dance, it's and he gives, oh, he gives you the fedora. Oh, he gives you the fedora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people thought I stole that look, you know, because another little Italian with you the fedora. You were the one, but right. I, just kinda, I brought it back. You know why I brought it back? You brought it back in your own way, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Quick trivia, it's really easy. What was the name of our band? Uh, uh, Downtown Sasquatch. Killed it. Killed no it. problem. Easy. Every time, Jake. Honestly, great to see you, buddy. You too, man. Quick, I have to ask one more really quick. Was it great just seeing everybody today? Is it weird? It's, it's so weird. What's funny is everyone's acting like it's kind of a test because we're being asked a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. like, what do they ask you about the show? <laughs> do you remember episode, in the fourth season? It's what like, happened? What happened? <laughs> like, yeah, how'd you do in there? You gotta see, yeah. Give me a cheat sheet. I know. That's hysterical. I but it's I heard so you killed it. I heard you killed it. You yeah, well. somehow I remembered all yeah, these yeah. things. You're yeah, going to do way better than me. I'm about to go in right now. Good luck. What was my character's name? What am I? Was you? Dead rock. Amazing. All right. Good.